this poor kid, I'm getting ready to pick up some cattle panels and T posts and all that stuff. And I'm not sure he's ever driven a forklift, so this should be a good time. And I'm no pro on one, but he said it was the second day. So we'll see, as long as he stays away from my truck. them so they fit in the back of my regular pickup to eight feet and that way I can uh, I mean they're easier to manage they fit in the truck I don't have to go get a trailer and where the land is and the lay of it and all that um, and just based on how rocky it is I'm gonna have to have a post every eight feet anyway so I'm just gonna cut them it's no big deal but I've done it before many times so I'll uh, check back with you in a second Grinder from DeWalt, big old six amp battery. So, tons of fun. We're on a busy road right here, too. Somebody just killed a skunk, and it is brutal. So, all right. My plan is a like a 50 by 30. It's actually gonna be 48 by 32, just because the cattle panels are 16 feet. Hog panels. Um, I know there's a difference, but Tractor Supply calls these cattle panels. This particular one I bought. So um, yeah, I'm gonna sit them back off the road the best I can. Got a couple obstacles here trailer, old barn or lean to, and a Shelby. So, at least it says Shelby on the side of it. So, um, yeah, this will be a good time. I'm flying solo. Obviously, Adler at seven months is not much help for manual labor yet. Um, the case is in school, but that's okay. That's what I wanted to do. And, uh, I'll find a place to put you guys and you can watch me work. And by the way, I'll put a couple pictures in here. I've built a fence or two. I'm not boasting or bragging. Remember, there's a whole bunch of cabins. You know, I'm in Southwest Missouri and I've been all over the country and uh, or down south a lot more. And I'll say that uh, I've seen some cabins that are 100 years old that were built without power tools. So don't let anybody boast to you about putting some T-posts and cattle panel in the ground. <laughs> but, but if it's something that you've accomplished, I don't look at that like boasting. That's... Uh, patting yourself on the back and I think that's absolutely okay so we'll get going here if you guys see me do something stupid let me know down below I'm sure you will and uh I'd expect it no worries so 
I think I'm gonna put these suckers, there's a lot of brush. I know it's not green, but it is alive. So I think I'm gonna put these suckers in some of this thicker brush here. and That way as spring comes around, cause it is uh, January 14th and currently 64 degrees in January. And they're calling for snow on next Friday. So that's how it goes. So anyway, let's roll. I haven't seen one of these this is what i'm doing i'll show you one there's a whole lot of videos where guys do this quicker and faster and all that good stuff but take a clip here with that'll focus get you one of these you're like four bucks okay but you put your little one on first big little that's what i'm going with And you pin it in there. I just hooked the little one, wrapped it around, and I got this over here. You got three different gauges. Middle one is what I need for this application. You put it through that hole and you just wrap it. You can see how it works its way out every turn you make. And then you have a perfectly clipped tie. I also learned too since we're talking about being students of YouTube, put your fence on the inside of the post. Um, and some of these, might as well call where I'm at in Rock Country, Missouri. Now, that's not a legit name, it's not a legal name, it's just what I'm calling it. Like I said, I built fences, so I can tell you right now where we're at, Rock. All Southwest Missouri. <laughs> so anyway, any of them that are showing a little bit, the blades, or spade, whatever you want to call it, um, I'll get a hammer and come back out and touch them down a little bit but I'm not going to break my back with that post driver. So anyway, that's what I got. I'll set you guys back up. This will be where their structure goes. Um, you know, their shed, goat shed, whatever you want to call it. But I'll put the back between those posts and use that as a barrier. So uh, about eight feet apart, so perfect size. But yeah, that's it. And I know I've been talking about two acres and how much land I've got and, you know, describing, trying to get you guys an idea of what I'm working with here. So. Um, it's not that this is all the room I'm going to use. I mean, clearly <laughs> tons of room out here. Sorry for that spin move if you got dizzy, but weather, the weather's changing. It was 60 degrees this morning. Right now it's 50. So tomorrow when we get up, it's supposed to be like 30 degrees. Now I'm not that worried about it, but a day after that, a lot of rain. So what I'm trying to do is just get the goats out of my backyard just so they've got um, more room, first off, and not having to wait till the rain you know, subsides to get them out here. So that's what I'm doing because they've completely demolished all the grass in two different paddocks in the backyard. And uh, I want to give them something else to eat that they'll enjoy. And you can see there's tons of brush that they're going to be able to just go to town on. So anyway... That's the goat pen as it sits right now. I think uh, I'll 
make this a video and then I'll do something on the day that I bring them out here and hopefully that's tomorrow morning because tomorrow I'm going to build their structure right there.